Hello and welcome to this presentation for what's new in Revit 2021 for architecture. I'm Greg Benson Shettle, I'll be your presenter and I'm one of the very many Autodesk certified instructors that we have here at Greytech. I've been here man and boy for over 20 years and have seen the company go from strength to strength as an Autodesk Platinum dealer with multiple offices across the UK, Europe and the Americas. Greytech is over 30 years old. We have a proven pedigree in supporting our clients with sales, technical support, training and product development to strengthen your investment in the Autodesk software. We sell, train, support, develop and use the design software. CAD is in our very DNA as a service provider and we fully appreciate the BIM process. Customer first is our mantra and we truly mean it. Working together with the Autodesk portfolio, our power pack enhancements, we aid the creation of construction and manufacturing deliverables and we can help you verify those deliverables by using our simulation products to drive the designs into fabrication process and then manage those deliverables with our common data environment products such as OpenTree linking to your internal and external platforms. No other dealer can offer this depth of assistance across your global offices in the world. Okay, on to the main event. We have quite a list of improvements with Revit 2021 from the basic Revit platform to improve areas of work right across all sectors as well as new features specifically for architect structures and MEP. In this presentation we're going to be concentrating on the useful parts of the architectural side. Okay let's get on with the demo. When you first open up Revit 2021 you're going to be presented with a wizard that will allow you to customize the very experience that you have with Revit based upon your primary discipline. You will be offered choices to choose elements of Revit you want to use and hide any tool ribbon sets in the UI user interface that you don't need. You can see here icons uh, for different industry sectors that you could select to define the tools that you prefer to use. Once you've gone through the process, the wizard will be gone for good. So what if you need to change your mind? Well, don't worry. We can still change the tool sets because this wizard is just a user friendly way of accessing the options that we already have in Revit. Let's take a look at this. I'm just going to open up a project so that we can access the Revit options. Let me go to the file menu and the options and from here we can select user interface options. In the user interface configuration panel we have a series of checkboxes next to each of the available tool sets in Revit. By ticking or unticking these checkboxes you can decide which you want to see. It's up to you. For instance you may not want to see energy analysis or route analysis and so you could switch those off. Probably one of the most anticipated uh, and welcome additions to Revit is the ability to draw walls that are slanted at last. So let's see how this works. We'll start a wall and we'll just set this to level one and then we'll draw a series of walls. These are just our normal vertical walls, nothing spectacular going on here. We'll open up a 3D view, let's tile these, quick zoom extents and let's see how we can change these from vertical to slanted. Select one of the walls, take a look over in the properties panel and we have a new parameter here in the constraints area called cross section. 
We can see that it's currently set to vertical. Click in here, that drop down appears, and we can change it to slanted. With this set, another new parameter appears where we can change the angle in degrees. Now these can be from negative 90 to positive 90. So let's set these to 30 degrees for example and we can see the slanted wall. And as you can see the walls that are accompanying it, they've adjusted to suit the new walls. Now you could draw the walls like this right from the start. I'll delete this wall and we'll start a new wall and then go directly to the uh, properties palette into the cross section parameter, set it to slanted change the angle to 30 degrees and draw it in and it looks like this in your plan view you'll get a slightly strange view where you can see the bottom of the wall and the sloped side and the sectional cut view at the top uh, as per your view range okay so how about doors and windows how do we add these the same way you always have but with one extra control so we'll add a door here and as we can see it's added as normal but it is vertical now obviously with a regular swinging door uh, slanting this wouldn't work uh, we would probably design a porch or a dormer style entrance um, unless of course it was an outward opening door like you might get on a basement or cellar door perhaps but maybe this is a sliding door and we'll pretend that that's what it is it's going to be a sliding door so select the door go to the properties palette and here we have a new parameter called orientation currently it's set to vertical click in here and we can change it to slanted and it will immediately align with the wall if we select the wall and change the angle the door will stay with the angle of the wall and it will be the same process for windows. Let's go and add a couple of windows. They come in vertically in the first instance, just like the door. But then we can select them both, go to the properties palette, and we're going to find a similar tool where we can change the orientation from vertical is slanted. Creating these slanted walls before required quite a bit of setup and in my training courses learning how to make these was a good half hour or so training session but now here they are they're just done it's as easy as that I guess I'll have to find something else to fill up that time in my advanced Revit courses. I'd like to take a moment to look at some additional considerations with these slanted walls. So I have built a small model uh, to experiment with. Uh, let's go open that now. So just a few quick notes when working with these. Um, it will work with all types of walls. It could work with stacked walls. It will work, as you can see, with curtain walls as well. It works just fine. The uh, windows, as we saw before, windows will go in and so will doors. Now, here's the thing. If you embed curtains to create window panels, which normally works great, by setting the curtain wall property uh, in the edit type uh, to embed using uh, this little tick box here, um, it will normally cut out of the main wall. Now, unfortunately, this currently doesn't work with slanted walls, even if you selected the curtain wall to be slanted as well. But hopefully, this will be improved in an update. So to get around this, for now, uh, we'll have to use our wall opening tool uh, to create the space that you need for the curtain wall. Just another little side note about the content packs that come with Revit. Uh, some of these have been rearranged. For example, if you think about a curtain wall door, we go off to the uh, Insert tab and go to Load Family. Uh, you'd expect normally to find these in the uh, Curtain Wall Panel uh, directory. However, if you take a look in here, it's almost empty. 
So, where have they gone? Well, if you actually go to doors, uh, we'll actually find the uh, curtain wall doors in here. Okay, so be aware that some of your content packs uh, may have been rearranged. Now, just a quick caveat on that. If this is the case, if you're using the uh, English Content Center, however, if you're using the UK Content Center, everything remains the same. So make sure you're accessing the one that you prefer. Moving on. The insert ribbon has had uh, a bit of an update regarding images and PDFs. For example, um, if we open up a plan view, on the uh, insert ribbon, we have next to the images icon, we've got now import PDF, which was uh, came in the last release. Now in 2021, we now also have link images and link PDF. So they don't need to be permanently embedded into your Revit file. Also, some other ribbon changes. Um, you may notice that we no longer have a Manage Images button because now all of these have been included in the Manage Links tab. So if we find Manage Links, take a click on there, and in here we'll be able to see that we can now have images and PDFs. So here we have an image of a sketch that I did to start this project with. At, down at the bottom we're going to find our usual reload from, reload, remove and add additional ones if you need to. If you had several images or PDFs then you could select some of them or all of them in this area and use those tools in a similar way. So with links for images and PDFs uh, you can actually have those loaded from the cloud and obviously this will help you keep information up to date and not increase the file size um, or embedding uh, images into your PDF. So that can be quite useful. Now another nice improvement is the graphics. Okay. Down in the visual control bar we can find uh, the graphic display options and on the pop-up you may notice that ray trace option has been removed and the reason for this is that the realistic mode has been significantly improved to include a kind of version of real-time rendering. As you orbit around your model you're going to find that with the realistic setting we can better see the shadows, they're looking nicer, we've got reflective surfaces that look more realistic and the presentation of materials overall is just so much better than it was before and I'm sure this will go from strength to strength. So let's take a look at some other tools. Some other changes are on the coordination side of Revit. You may be aware that in the point to update of Revit 2020, we were gifted with the ability to see Revit's elusive internal origin point. So if we go to a site plan and we'll open up visibility graphics, we can now switch on the, its visibility. If we scroll down, expand site tools, and in there we'll find a checkbox for the internal origin. Place a tick in here and uh, click on OK. And over here we can see it. It has a UCS style appearance. Now another new feature uh, is the ability to see the base points and the survey points of linked in Revit files. Okay, so I have a linked file. I just need to load it from the Manage Links tool. So I'll just go over to Revit Links and just do a select it and reload. And OK, wait for that to load. Now we have a site display 
here and if you take a look you'll notice we can see in grey uh, there is the site survey point and further down uh, we've got the base point and the LinkedIn one is a bit difficult to see in this one because it's underneath the blue base point but by using the tab key uh, we can reveal it so now that we can see these linked uh, base points and survey points um, it really is very helpful to give us that visual check of where the linked files have come in okay so these coordination tools uh, are listed as new features to 2021 um, and that was because they were not in the first release of 2020 however if you did have the mid-year point to update they were actually introduced then we're now going to take a look at uh, some family matters. So we've got a couple of new features uh, to do with families. And the first one we're going to take a look at is to do with annotation families. And we have a new tool available that will allow us to control uh, the rotation behavior on tags so the tags I'm talking about are the sort of tags that you see uh, on section heads on callouts and even these types of tags that you've used to actually identify uh, elements or components within the families let's take a look at what we need to do we'll start off with looking at these now as you can see even though the desk is vertical the tag remains horizontal it's going to be very simple that we can now change this so if we select the item go to edit family I'm not even going to bother zooming in because the main area of interest is in the properties palette and it is this new feature that we've got with annotation families rotate with component all we need to do is pop a tick into that box we'll load it back into the project overwrite the existing and hey presto this is now rotated and it's in line with the component that it's attached to uh, just to illustrate this a little further if I simply rotate this desk and I'll put it to some odd angle you can see that it rotates perfectly so it's not just for these tags we could also do it uh, for you know these as well if you wanted these in line if you wanted the text in line with the section line if we uh, pop down to our families have a look at the uh, anno section head uh, right click edit and once again we have got that rotate text with component pop a tick in there and load it back into the project I won't bother saving overwrite the original and so now we can see that these vertical uh, section lines the text is in line with that over on the horizontal it's in line with that and in fact if I even rotated one of these you can see it's staying with the rotation of the object that that annotation family is saved to so that's a really nice tool I like it a lot it's going to allow us to uh, improve some of the presentation uh, in our documentation where it's appropriate okay let's have a look at another family improvement uh, we've got some elements down in here I'm just gonna pop over to a different view in here we've got a simple cabinet element and we've got a new feature that will allow us to control the visibility of voids in a family now this is brand spanking new if we open up this family we'll go and take a look now when you look at this actual extrusion that's been formed here we can see it's got like a splashback effect but it's not actually visible and the reason is because it has a void cutout on there so I just need to select that void now sometimes getting the void can be tricky so I'm gonna select the whole thing use my filter uh, switch off the elements and keep the voids selected and now I should be able to pick just that void 
So here it is, over in the properties palette again, in the graphics area where it says cut geometry, this is a new parameter and we can use associate family parameter on this. Uh, so we'll create a new one, I'll call it splashback. We can make it an instance and OK. Let's load that back into the uh, project. I won't bother saving on this occasion. Overwrite the existing. Give it a moment. Right, let's have a look. Select the element and there it is. Splashback is now available so we could toggle this on or off as we need to. So this is a really good a little extra that we can control that we've now got on our family creations. So previously when we needed to do something like this we would have to do uh, some far more sophisticated work with parameters and dimensions to s switch something like that on and off. Or you'd have to have it as a separate element but you couldn't do it with the voids. So this is a great one. I like this a lot. Another new tool that we can find on the insert ribbon um, is this Get Autodesk Content. Okay, this opens up a website and if we click on this, it will open up your preferred browser. And in on this page, you're going to find uh, you have a whole variety of content packs that you can download. The reason for this is that sometimes with the installations you may not get all of the content. So this is the opportunity to be able to download uh, one that you may want and add it to your system. So I previously downloaded uh, this UK one here and obviously then closed Revit, run the uh, EXE to see what extra it would actually give me. Now what I found was before I actually uh, did the uh, installation on that I had 401 folders uh, containing some 3,455 files. After that I had 417 so that's an extra 16 folders and the uh, quantity of files contained within those went up to 3,930. So doing this it's actually added an extra 475 families in my UK content center so it could be well worth doing so when you do your installation if you find that your uh, content pack is looking a little on the light side then go to your insert ribbon and click on this tool and choose a pack that you'd like to download One of the uh, powerful new features that we have um, in this version is a thing called Generative Design. Now, Generative Design is a process or a tool that you can use uh, to help you design various options on any considerations that you may have. Now, this is a very powerful tool and does take a, a little bit of time and it's backed up with the uh, power of, of Dynamo. So to find this, if we go over to uh, the uh, Manage tab, here on the Manage tab we're looking for this panel here called Generative Designs. And there's a couple of options here. We can say Create Study and Explore Outcomes. Okay, so if we click on Create Study, just waiting for a panel to open up, So with the Create Study button, um, it provides us with uh, three uh, built-in recipes, as they call them, uh, so that you can start testing some ideas. Now, I'm just going to click over to my Floor Level 2. So we can maximize window views, you can do some massing of ideas, or you could look with the work, work with your workspace. So let's have a look at this. We'll click on Workspace and we have various options 
um, that we can go through. How do you want to optimize it, cross-platform, uh, randomize, or just keep it on optimize. So the first thing you need to do is select in the model, uh, select the space that you're interested in. Okay, so it says here, so I click on select, it tells you to select, and it's asking you to select a room. So this is a Revit room, so something like this. Then select a desk family. So I'm going to come in and select our desk family. You can then have a desk row rotation as an option. Uh, this, you can have an option for spacing between rows. I'm going to switch that one off. And then you can set your goals. And this is the whole idea of generative design. It's a concept where you want to start with the end in mind. Or to put it another way, or the new phrase, latest phrase is outcome-based design. So what are the goals? Are we looking for the average distance to exits? No, I don't really care about that. Uh, number of desks is important and possibly views to the outside world. We can have some other constraints as well. Uh, again, uh, we've got the average distance, um, views to outside, number of desks. So I want to set a minimum and maximum. And I'd like to say, look, I want a minimum of 15 and I want a maximum of 15. In other words, I don't want any latching down. Yeah. You can say what the population size is. Well, so it doesn't get confused, I'm going to say 15. And then you can tell it how many iterations or how many design generations you'd like it to go off and calculate. I don't want to set this going for too long, so I'm just going to say three. And then we click on generate. This new dialog box opens up and you get this nice little graphic to say, look, I'm working it out. It's going to take me some time to come up with these ideas. So check back later to see the outcomes. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to minimize this for now and I can always open it up a bit later. In the meantime, let's take a look at another tool. Now in 2020, we had the option to do a, a new tool which is Path of Travel, where you can specify a start point and an exit point uh, so that it will, Revit will then figure out what is going to be the shortest route. We go off to the Analyze tab, and what we're looking for here is a route analysis panel. Now you'll notice I don't see it. Now if you recall, earlier in the presentation, route analysis was one of those options that I turned off. So I'm going to pop over to uh, file and options, user interface, scroll down and pop a tick back in root analysis and we should see it populate in here. There it is, root analysis. So there we can find path of travel. Now they have upgraded this in 2021. So first of all I'll do a start point. I want to start here and I want to finish over here on the downstair. So this is the path of travel and it figures out the quickest route to get to the destination. And you know, if I made life awkward and grabbed a desk and put it in its way, one of the options you can do is select the path and choose update. And it then figures out how to maneuver around the new obstacle. So what's new in this version? Well, we have the capacity now to add a waypoint. So this is the opportunity to change the route to say, look, I want you to get to the exit as fast as possible. However, I need you to go somewhere else first. So with the add waypoint, you select a waypoint and I'm going to choose you add it. You click and hold and I'm going to drag it over to this pillar. Perhaps there's a coffee machine there, maybe. And so here it is. It has now worked out this new route. Keep in mind that you can add further waypoints and you can also delete waypoints. Okay, When you have this selected, you can always update it if you change it or if something moves. 
Now another new feature that we have in this version is now the ability to have a visual check on what the obstacles are. If we click on reveal obstacles it goes into a special viewing mode and everything there in orange you can see is uh, considered to be an obstacle. We have one of these little diagonal arrows here, root analysis settings, and this will allow you to remove elements that you don't want to be, it to consider to be uh, obstacles. So what could I do? Let's do something completely ridiculous and say walls are no longer an obstacle, which of course they are. We do OK. Select the path. Update. And now it's going through that wall to get to that point. So you can make these kind of changes if you need to. So this is just a viewing mode and when you click back on reveal obstacles it goes back to normal viewing. I have just popped over to the Autodesk website and in here you can find plenty of additional help uh, regarding generative design. Um, I have lots of programs in here about how to use it, uh, videos, in fact Autodesk have put a huge amount of information um, about how to use this. Now when it comes to using uh, generative designs and creating your own recipes then this is all going to be about Dynamo. So we'll go over to Revit where I have already opened up Dynamo. Now you can get access to Dynamo from the Manage tab. Uh, we'll find it over on the right hand side. It's on a panel called Visual Programming. And in here we've got Dynamo. So this is the very latest version of Dynamo 2.5 and it provides a host of new capabilities. Uh, for example, Dynamo now will find required packages in a refreshed workspace reference viewer. It has got a, a whole new set of tools that will allow you to make the best of Dynamo coupled with Revit because they've actually added in uh, 10 new Dynamo Revit nodes uh, to help support the most commonly requested conditions for geometry joining, pinning, unpinning and hosting Revit elements. So obviously Dynamo in itself is a whole bit other discussion but it is important to be aware that Revit is supporting the very, very latest version to maximize usage of Dynamo with Revit. Now, let's see how those generative designs outcomes worked out. Okay, we ask for three presentations, three ideas. I guess with the constraints that we put in there, it could only come up with two. And so, when you have a design, you could either ignore these or you could use them. And to use them, you select them, you can preview them. And in the bottom right hand corner here, we have Create Revit Elements. Click on here, we'll get a dialog box confirming that it's now creating those elements. It'll take a little while for those to actually be processed, but not too long. And then the dialog box uh, should update to say that it has actually completed creating those elements. There we are. Elements created and completed. So let's see the new desk layout on this particular floor plan. And there we have it. It's laid out the desks. Okay, there is one collision with a column. And I suspect the reason for that is that in this particular study recipe, they didn't include a dynamo node to say watch out for a for columns and avoid columns so that would be a tweaking in the code back in dynamo to fix that small issue but it's come up with a layout that perhaps we wouldn't have thought out and that's one of the interesting things about this generative design uh, very often um, the system's going to come up with an ideas that perhaps you hadn't even thought of that could be worth considering Okay, moving on. A couple of things uh, left to take a look at that are well worthwhile in this particular update. And we're going to have a look at some improvements to schedules. 
So I have a uh, simple schedule here. It happens to be a Mullion schedule. Now, one of the nice things that came in uh, actually in the point two, but of course it's officially new in uh, 2021, is the ability to be able to zoom in on these schedules because they can get be quite small. So if I hold the control key down, the CTRL key, and then use my wheelie mouse, I can now actually zoom in so I can actually read the writing if I don't have my glasses on, for example. And another nice new one that we've got is the ability to freeze the headers. So when you have really long lists, this is invaluable. We can click on freeze header now. And as I zoom up, okay, all of these values are the same. So it's only the length that appears to be changing. But using the slider bar, you can see that it's actually going to make life a lot easier. Oh, finally, we get to new one, freeze headers. Okay, now for one that actually is brand new in 2021. When you have these big long lists, it can be difficult sometimes or to track across when they're really busy ones. So what we could actually do is put a fill color in every other row and just makes it easier to read. Now, this is a new feature and we can find this uh, new feature in the appearance tab. So if we head on over to the properties palette, uh, find appearance, click on the edit button and on the appearance tab here, there it is, stripe rows. Do you want to stripe the rows? Yes, please. I'll put a tick in the box and we can either put a color in the first row or we can put a color in the second row, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to put it in the second row. You can then nominate a color of your own choice, whichever you like. Go ahead and click OK. And there we are. We can now clearly see uh, the rows in our busy schedules. So that makes life easier. OK, and lastly, let's take a look at some other presentation tools that we now have. So I'm just going to zoom in on these walls here slightly. So we can apply visibility graphic filters to anything we like. And we've been able to do that for a long time. And you would apply a filter over in the visibility graphics. I'm just going to pop into visibility graphics. We have our filter column. And so in here, you know, we can add and create uh, new filters. And if they were in that particular view, then they would be on, and that's that. But now we've added a, a new column right at the beginning, enable filter. So this makes life really easy. Um, so I want to show all of the uh, walls in red. I can pop a tick in here, go ahead and click on apply. And so now all the internal walls are red because it's featuring the internal walls. And there's another example. Um, I'd like to put a hatch pattern on the inside of any walls that are over three meters. And apply. There we go. So new feature in the filters, the ability to have multiple filters on a particular view, but you decide which ones you actually want to apply with a simple tick of a box. And that's the best of what's new in Revit Architecture 2021. I uh, hope you found some interesting and helpful new features in this release. Uh, why not head over to the Autodesk account and download it for yourselves today, even if it is just for those slanted walls. For more design software tips and tricks, uh, why not uh, go to our website and then our blog page and subscribe to receive the very latest news from our team of industry experienced application engineers. That brings us to a close uh, to today's presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this today. I'm Greg Benson Shettle and once again thank you, keep safe and goodbye for now.